What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I upload a Wuthering Waves video, but frankly, there hasn't been much going on. Shaji released. I had no power. I really, I really couldn't do anything with that. So I've been a little bit dissociated from uh, Wuthering Waves for a little bit, but we got some hype information about Shorekeeper. And let me tell you, I don't throw this term out lightly, guys. She looking like a must pull, if I do say so myself. I really don't like saying characters are must pulls, but she kind of she kind of is, okay? In this video, we're going to break down her animations and her kit as it currently stands in the beta. Obviously, all these things are subject to change, so keep that in mind. So if you enjoy this type of content, let me know by liking the video, leaving a comment in the comment section below, and consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so she's going to be a spectral rectifier user, uh, kind of like Verena. And then conveniently enough, she is a very similar character to Verena in the sense that she is a support healer type character. All right, these are going to be the materials we have to upgrade her. We have two new materials that we are going to have to use to upgrade her. And I'm pretty sure we're going to find out what those are as the update gets closer to release. Uh, normal attack, origin, calculus. Perform to four consecutive attacks dealing spectral damage. When the attack hits the target, generate one collapse core. When we saw in the videos, every time that she hit the little turtle, we have we saw these little floaty things floating around uh, around the turtle. Those are the collapse cores. Now, heavy attack, hold the normal attack button at the cost of stamina and enter the release form, which enables a shortkeeper to one, accumulate segment of speculative data, and two, automatically collect plants and collectibles within a certain range. This is actually really strong. Tap the normal attack button or use the stamina. Uh, or use all of your stamina to release to get out of the release form and then deal specter damage meanwhile every accumulated speculative data transforms into actual data this pretty much this whole section right here the whole normal attack to her heavy attack is essentially her transforming into a little butterfly and flying around as we saw in the little video and every second that she is in that butterfly state you see her forte gauge uh kind of filling up little by little once you have it filled up or once you want to get out of it you press your uh, attack button and then she comes out does an attack and then you get I think uh, a collapse core as well. Meta attack, nothing crazy, generates one collapse core. And her whole kit is going to revolve around having these collapse cores transform into like these butterflies and having butterflies attacking the enemy, running around, doing all that crazy stuff. All right, so normal attack, that's pretty self-explanatory, really easy to understand what she's doing. Uh, resonant skill, we didn't get to see this in the video, but it restored HP for all members. Uh, for all team members and summon five dim star butterflies dim star butterflies automatically track and attack targets dealing spectral damage that can be performed in midair uh, her multipliers aren't looking that great so this is not meant for you to deal astronomical amounts of damage so this is not the intent of these uh, dim star butterflies now her resonance liberation as we saw is called end loop and it has pretty much three different domains that that you, that you can access the first one is called elementary stellar stellar realm expand the elementary stellar realm that's the initial uh, stellar realm continuously restored hp for all team members within the stellar realm this effect can be triggered once every three, once every three seconds so whenever you do your ultimate you have this realm where everybody who's in there gets restored HP every three seconds. Now, sophisticated realm with a nearby team member uses an intro skill within the elementary realm, it evolves into this sophisticated realm. So pretty self-explanatory, you do your ultimate, you do your intro skill, uh, and then it's going to go from one realm to the other realm. In sophisticated realm, for every 20% increase in short keepers energy regen, all nearby team members in the domain gain 1% crit rate up to a maximum of 10. This is extremely, extremely strong. We don't have a single, I think we have maybe one or two characters that I don't even know we have one actually that uh, buff crit rate for your allies. So off the bat, getting t getting 20 crit value just from doing an interest, an ultimate into an interest skill, which we are going to do anyway. It, it's just insane that this, th this already has a lot of value. And then also the sophisticated realm evolves, involves the effects of the elementary realm. This pretty much means that whatever this realm had, this realm is going to also have. And then the last realm is called the release realm. When the nearby team member choose intro skill with sophisticated realm, it evolves 
into the uh, release realm. Same thing apply if you have one realm on and then you do an intro skill, it goes into the next following realm. In release realm, for every 10% increase in Cherokee percent energy region, all team members in the domain gain 1% crit rate up to a maximum of 20. So do you get a max of 20 or a max of 30? Because this realm gives you 10 and then this realm gives you 20. So does this realm include this realm inside of it? or is it an extra 20 on top? We're just gonna have to wait and find out about that. Now, if you notice in the release realm, it says for every 10 energy or 10 energy regen, and then the, the previous one was every 20 energy regen. So this one can stack up to 20 times and this one can stack up to 10 times. So for this, you need 200 energy regen and for this, you also need 20, 200 energy regen. So if you have 200 energy regen, you're gonna be able to proc both, but I don't know if they add on to each other. I don't know if you get an extra 30 Crit rate, if you get an extra 30% crit rate, that is insanity. But I'm pretty sure it's just going to be 20. Um, Because 30 is just too much. Like, it, it's too big of a crit rate increase. That is pretty much almost like the same as having food on you. Which, if you really think about it, when, you, when you're out there trying to get the holograms and you eat food, that's what pretty much what you're doing. You're getting 24, 25, 26. I think 30% crit rate is the, the max one. So, I mean, it wouldn't really surprise me if it's 30, but I think it's a huge buff if it's 30% crit rate instead of 20. At 20, it's still pretty high, but at 30, it's just insane. And then release cell realm involves all the effects of sophisticated cell realm. So what I'm saying is that if you max out this, let's say this, this maxes out, and this is up to 10% crit rate. So this is already maxed out. And then this kid's carried on onto here. So do you get healing and 30% crit rate? If that's the case, that's insane. Or maybe this is meant to be crit damage. Who knows? When released, Cellar Realm exists. Uh, the Shortkeeper's Intro Skill Enlightenment will be replaced by Intro Skill Discernment. All right, so you get a variation of your Intro Skill, which is, I, I guess, pretty nice. Our here, first inherent skill, Cycle of Life. When a team member suffers a fatal injury, they will not fall, but instead receive 50% of Shortkeeper's HP. With the Shortkeeper losing the same amount of HP, this effect can be triggered once every 10 minutes. So pretty much has a... a fail safe like a like a get out of jail free card pretty much like a like a revival kind of mechanic which is pretty good kind of the same way Verena does as well which is pretty interesting her second inherent skill self gravitation when the shorekeeper is on the team or when stellar realm is active or if the team is within the black shores area the shorekeeper's energy regen increased by 10 if the rover is in the same team energy regen also increases by 10. so she gives herself a free 10 percent energy regen because if you're using her she's obviously going to be on the team so she's giving herself 10 percent energy regen uh yeah so it's pretty much one time you get 10 percent but you're I, this doesn't make sense maybe this is translation error because you're always going to have shorekeeper on the team if you're using her so it doesn't make a lot of sense but uh, if you have Rover, if you're using her with Rover, you get an extra 10% energy regen, which is pretty nice. Moving along, intro skill, thus proved. The shortkeeper appears to restore HP for all nearby members and summon five Dim Star Butterflies. Dim Star Butterflies automatically track and attack targets, dealing spectral damage. This is considered resonance skill damage. And then obviously we have the second intro skill, which is called discernment, which we get from the ultimate the, from doing release stellar realm is when release stellar realm exists, the shortkeeper intro skill. Yeah, this is what we discussed. Cast discernment to end the current stellar realm, restore HP for all nearby team members and attack targets to deal spectral damage is considered critical resonance liberation damage. So this is pretty much ultimate damage, uh, but it's guaranteed to crit. I'm pretty sure that's what that means, which looking at her multipliers, like why is discernment less than enlightenment that makes no sense to me but apparently <laughs> discernment is uh is, doesn't have great multipliers compared to its weaker state which i don't know the, take these numbers with a grain of salt all of this is more than likely going to end up changing uh by the time she releases all right ultra skill binary butterfly the shortkeeper summons one flare star butterfly and one dim star butterfly the butterflies circle all nearby team members which present which are present for 30 seconds so the two butterflies just fly around for 30 seconds huge amount of time that's an insane amount of time when the flare star butterfly is present tap on the dodge button when the nearby team member is being hit or juggled will allow them to successfully dodge and safely land on the ground this effect can be triggered up to five times so Pretty much if you have a flare star butterfly you get free perfect dodges and um not perfect dodges essentially if you get hit or like you're being stunned or you let's say they throw you around you can press the button and it like pretty much resets you on the ground um 
It sounds pretty good. It, it, it sounds like Shorekeeper is meant to keep your team like alive better than Verena, for instance, does. Because she has revives, she has ways of getting you out of like tough spots. Let's say you miss a dodge and you get slapped. You can essentially dodge again and then you get transported back into being on your feet, I guess. We get a little bit of Ultra Instinct, you know? Uh, now, the Dim Star Butterfly is present all nearby team members' uh, damage amplified by 15%. This is the exact amount of damage amplification that Verena has. So if Verena is amplifying all the damage, this is also amplifying all the damage. It's the exact same wording, so she is going to be pretty much a one-to-one, not a one-to-one -one, because I think she's going to be better than Verena, but everything that Verena can do, she can do a little bit better, at least off from me reading uh, what her kid is going to be doing. All right, now the Forte Circuit, Astral Cord, Flare Star Butterfly, generated Floating Collapse Core when normal attack is the target. We saw this in the turtle video whenever they were hitting the turtle. We have the little floaty things popping around, uh, which emerges as Flare Star Butterfly after six seconds. So after six seconds, they all the cores turn into butterflies. Star Flare Butterflies automatically track and attack targets, dealing spectre damage. And remember, the Flare Star Butterflies also give you the dodging mechanic. So by hitting the uh, the enemy, you get free dodges, essentially. Automatically track and attack target, dealing spectre damage. If there are already five collapsed cores, the next time Shorekeeper launches a normal attack, hits the target, one collapsed core will instantaneously transform into Star Flare Butterfly. So if you just keep spamming your normal attacks, the max amount of cores that are supposed to be out at the same time without turning into butterflies is five. So if you have five, you generate one more. The first one that you put out is going to transform into a butterfly. Now, deduction, when five segments of actual data have been accumulated, again, actual data is, you know, when she transforms into a butterfly, she has the, 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 it's, it's pretty much the forte circuit that's glowing. Once the forte circuit is glowing, that's segmented data. Whenever she uh, pops it, essentially, and it turns yellow, that is actual data. Casting heavy attack will consume actual data segments to draw in nearby enemies and dealing spectre damage. Meanwhile, all generated uh, collapse cores will instantly transform into star flare butterflies. We saw this in one of the videos, the video with the turtle. Uh, she did like an explosion or something. No, actually, no, not the video with the turtles. We did this in the video without the turtle that she did kind of like an explosion kind of deal. That is pretty much what this is talking about. This is deduction. It's it's going to uh, draw in nearby enemies, which is insane. It's pretty much like a like a vortex that sucks them in. And then it's going to deal spectre damage and all the cores are going to transform into butterflies. Then we have transmutation. When five segments of actual data have been accumulated, casting meter attack will consume all actual data segments to deal spectre damage. Meanwhile, all generated collapse cores will instantly transform into flare star butterflies tap the normal attack again within range of a certain uh, time to perform basic attack too so you can pretty much loop with your mid-air attack when you have the five actual data that's pretty much what that means and then actual data shorekeeper can accumulate up to five which is the forte circuit and then shorekeeper obtains one segment of actual data when her normal attack origin calculus hits the target so a few ways to get actual data by hitting your normal attack and by uh holding your normal attack and going transforming into the butterfly essentially and waiting a few seconds uh, as the butterfly now uh she has healing bonus hp and yeah, yeah pretty much healing bonus and hp she gets a lot of it in here which is insane because for some reason they wanted verena to stack off attack and that's pretty annoying because you don't want to invest in attack on a healer so uh, this makes a lot more sense to me if you ask me. So yeah, so essentially Shorekeeper is going to be a pretty much a Verena helper. We have been uh, overworking Verena nonstop ever since the game came out because there's no other character. Maybe Baija is another character that you can possibly like put in that same category, but she doesn't do it the same way Verena does. Verena, damage amplification, the healing, everything that Verena does is so easy, so intuitive that you just do it on auto and it's super simple. That's what makes Verena so good. She also amplifies your damage by 15%. Every single piece of damage is amplified by 50%. And everything that Verena already does, Shorekeeper is looking to be doing, but also giving you a little bit of uh, ultra instinct if you, if you, if if I do say so myself. And crit rate, she gives you at least 20% crit rate as of this current time. Again, all these things are subject to change. So keep, take these with a grain of salt. But if that kit remains exactly how it is, just getting 10% crit rate is insane. Getting 20 is crazy, and then getting 30 is just ridiculous. So I don't think it's going to be 30. I think it's going to be 10 crit rate and 
20 crit damage by the time she releases. So yeah, we don't have any information about her weapon other than what it looks like. That's pretty much what we have, but we do know it gets up to 77% energy regen, which is out of this world. It's insane. If this weapon is kind of like the variation rectifier where it increases concerto energy gained, this is probably going to be a must pull as well. But as of right now, uh, you can probably use the variation uh, rectifier uh, because it does give you energy region and it also gives you concerto energy so varina is the strongest character in the game for a reason and she's going to be a better version of varina so this is going to be the only if, if there's any character in the game that is a must pull is going to be short keeper my only uh my only thing that puts me off from her is that she is actually spectral i you know I, i'm kind of fed up with the spectral ca characters we have jinsi and varina that i use pretty much everywhere so having another spectral kind of doesn't feel as, uh, as good. I, you know, if she would have been like wind, it would have been probably better in my opinion or havoc. We haven't received a single havoc five star yet. So we kind of need one. See, she, if she would have been havoc, it would have been great. But that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, see ya.